Welcome to another 2v2 matchup in the BFME1 online battle arena. This time on the map Duradan Forest with the Isengard faction. <laughs> A new power is rising. Okay, let's go for an economical opening and always pick the Warchan from your spellbook. And we can go for the safe options, you know, and capture the settlement right next to our castle. Which one? This one is going to be the, you know, the one which is providing us the most resources because it's in a safe spot. Okay, I will actually build a, a slaughterhouse there, not a lumber mill. Slaughterhouse a bit more tanky. You know, it starts it starts as level two, and it doesn't require any uh, lumber mill workers to produce your resources. But if you know it's a safe spot, uh, I think lumber mill is always the better choice. Capture this one and go forward. March. We are looking strong in this game so far. You know, getting the middle control is essential on this map. And it looks like we have three out of four settlements in the middle. And the one, only one our opponent has will be destroyed. But there comes the Isengard. So it's a mirror match. Isengard Mordor against Isengard Mordor. Evil Clash. That's what we call these matchups. Actually, I want to cancel this. I want to go for more furnaces. Um, I think it's safe to say that maybe in this situation it would be a better choice to rush the warp pit. Because remember, we will have to deal with lots of Uruks and Orcs. I mean, obviously we can do this with also our Uruks and Berserkers, but I think uh, the Orcs can just do that job much better and especially faster. Because all we gotta do is trample the Orcs over and over again and we should be good to go. Actually, need a lot of money for the warp pit. Uh, you know, it's kind of debatable if I should go for the slaughterhouse in my base and um, to make the warps a bit cheaper. But I think having cheaper upgrades with the furnaces is just like overall the better choice. Come on, smart move from my opponent to to uh, repair the structure. Though. I like it. And we have now the money for the warp pit. Okay, so the warps are gonna give us a lot of freedom, making making it way easier for us to protect our settlements outside and also you know kind of pressure the enemy settlements and you see we are prepared for this potential push with triple towers on the right side so uh, he needs to be careful our opponent has to be careful My works are hungry. I mean, Allah is doing okay. You know, it's not like... I think he's pretty even with the other guy. And I was also pressuring the Mordor. That means our uh, opponent, Aizen, should be in a, a strong position with the economy. Because we haven't touched his eco yet. He has like three, uh, potentially two or three untouched lumber mills outside. So he should be kind of uh, rich, you know. But that's about to be changed, as our war riders have been recruited. I would like to go for like two and then demolish it. And I also like to get lords up on the field, you know? Oh, that's gonna be free food. Trample time. Demolish it. And then we will go now for loot, you know. Um, you know, kind of... Kind of weird situation. Ooh, that's a... 
That's a crime, bro. That shouldn't be allowed. What are you doing there with your crossbow, man? Are you out of your mind? I'm gonna use Warchan and get so many power points there. Watch this. Without pikemen? Are you out of your mind? Oh my god. Creme de la creme, boys. The wet dream. I mean, we are in a kind of tricky situation because our ally is actually Mordor. And uh, with that being said, we don't really need much more leadership than what we will get from Mordor with the Eye of Sauron. But I don't know this person, you know, maybe he doesn't know what to do. So, what? Excellent balance, indeed. Back to Wukong. Back to your relative, you mean? The monkey? Who even are you, bro? <laughs> That's his, you know, I'm not even insulting him. That's his name. Who even are you? But now what, what happened, you know? I think that was the Mordor player. I don't know what happened. Guys, can you tell me what happened to him? Why did he leave? Okay, guys, that's gonna... When he left, and my opponent is... I don't know. I don't know what happened. When he left, and my opponent is kind of brave to play this 2v1, then let's call this one a beefy me quickie, because this one is gonna end super soon. I mean, he has two castles now, he's going to be super rich. But also, I'm super rich, you know. What happened, though? Can somebody guess in the comment section down below? What happened to this person? Why he left the game? Back to Wukong. Imagine playing Wukong instead of Battle for Middle Earth, you know. You see the amount of job our uh, works are able to do? That's fantastic, right? They're so good. I'm gonna build double tower there, actually. Bam and bam, just to have a bit more protection from this side. I don't need the money, you know. I need a bit more control. So I'm gladly switching or trading off some eco in exchange to have a bit more control and safety -ness. My Vorex, these two battalions have been doing a phenomenal job so far. They are super valuable. One of the best investments, actually, we could potentially get. That is a uh, Lourdes. And you know what's the best about the Vorex? And that's, you know, that's... Most people don't think about this. Now, look at our matchup. My ally is Mordor and I am Aizen, right? But yet again, they need to make pikemen. You know what I'm saying? And pikemen are horrible against orcs. Horrible against combos, horrible against Uruks. They are only good against my Vorks. But my Vorks are so impactful in this game that they have to get some pikemen which are bad against anything else I will be recruiting all game long. So with that being said, alone that fact is gonna make them super duper valuable. I mean, there are, there are still so many creeps actually, okay? Lourdes uh, needed one hour to creep this. If I didn't draw the sword, that would take another 10 minutes before he can creep the whole work layer. But now he's level 3, I need to use potentially Carnage. Yeah, I need to use Carnage. But you see, our Lourdes got from level 1 to level 4, uh, spending his whole day you know, trying to creep the work layer. Oh, I see a Saruman there. But it's okay. My ally is taking over too. I mean, obviously, I can't even blame my opponent because it's super, you know, pretty much impossible to play a 2v1. They are so rich now, we can do everything. I'm gonna go for double Uruk with technology. One of them in the castle, one of them at the outpost. Like, there we go, and there we go. Just to get the game and, you know, end this misery of my opponent a bit faster. Stop joking around. Go for the, for the W. But I still don't understand why he left, though. Who even are you? That's the name of username of this player. If you are watching this video on YouTube, please let me know in the comment section down below what happened. Really, I'm curious. I mean, maybe he got to Iwanta a little bit at the beginning and my Uruks were attacking him. Maybe that's what kind of made him mad. But if that's annoying, then you should not play a 2v2, you know? A 2v2 can always uh, turn into a 1v2 situation. So if you want to rely on yourself, you better play a 1v1. And we are getting everything. Like King Leonidas said, you know. 
Don't give them anything, but take everything from them. I feel so sad for this for this guy, you know. Oh my god, I'm, I'm I don't know what happened. It's annoying actually that he left. It could have been a good game, you know. It's a mirror match. It could have been really a good game. This game wasn't over yet. There would there was still a potential. The Isengard player was far ahead of me because of my opening. And by the time this Mordor would have a Nazgul and my Vorix would be useless, I don't know. I don't know why he left. Now, I'm at some point in my life, I don't care about the victory anymore. I want to have just a great game, you know? If I lose, I lose. I don't care. But I want to have a really fun and great game. But if the 2v2 turns into a 1v2 situation, it's just not fun. That's why we will end this now. We need to keep atten keeping attention to his Saruman. Um, because Saruman is definitely capable of turning the entire uh, fight around. So our Lourdes is going to be the one who's going to keep him checked all the time. So whenever he's trying to make a move, our Lourdes will be there to punish him with the cripple. And when he can't move, he's squish, he will die. And also, our Lourdes is almost level 5. It means we will have almost the 60 percent damage leadership during the fight. Big war chant and go ham. Just fight. You see, he's gonna try to come and immediately cripple him. You shall not move. Sariman, you fool. Let's go for a trample from behind. Nice trample, actually. Oh, now we need to run through the pikemen, though. Please, live. Live, work. Come on. For me. Never mind. Never mind. But we killed the Saruman. That's all it that matters. I don't want to lose this works either, so I'm going to just pull them back a little bit. And go for double siege works technology, and we will bring some rams to the Mordor base. Because it's the same player who's controlling two bases at once. So he won't be paying attention and I will ram his castle back, you know, to the graveyard. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, there's a Lourdes shooting at me. Get double Zerk and kill this Lourdes. Where's my army? Kill him. Kill the fighting Uruk, the Berserker. Oh, he's running for his life. Um... I can't tell you that much, boys. This lord ain't living, okay? I won't let him live. That is my second Berserker. I'm gonna use Palanti on them and speed them up a little bit. So, the Berserker and Lourdes are equally as fast. But if I give Palanti to my Berserker, he will be able, they will be able to catch up to Lourdes. There comes a drum. Okay, two Berserkers against the King of Berserker. Who is gonna win? Who's gonna win this? A 1v1. One one. Oh, my Berserker is better than yours. I mean, I feel so bad for this person. Their wise, their wise. I'm sorry, my friend. Uh, really, this, you deserve better. I'm not even feeling proud of this victory, actually. And kind of uh, sad, but also mad. But anyways, I hope you still enjoyed this beef me quickie. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, guys.